please guide us on uh, do a recap of what we did last week. The last uh, scripture. And we have a recap of it. Chapter 5. What can you say you learned from last lesson? Personally, what can you say? Oh, this is what I learned. Or if you want to do a general recap, you can quickly do that in two minutes. Example, amen. And that as Christians, we need to, we, we are to judge ourselves, right? We need to call such people and let them know that this is not right. You know, um, you know that was even an example. There a whole lot of things happening in the church, and there are a lot of us just, you know, you just like, <clears throat> you don't know my business, so you throw away your faces and all that. And that is eating deep and um, also affecting others. That's the kind of negative influence that some people are bringing to the church. It's having an effect on, their, uh, on others, especially the young believers. When I say young believers, I don't mean young children. I mean those who are just coming to, to Christ newly. They are still young. Their minds are still very, very um, new. So when they see those who are being in the church doing things like this, they believe that it is accepted. And they believe, oh, you know, they can do it. Uh, especially as leaders, pastors, there are things that we should avoid because we'll be leading people astray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Especially those who are either you inquire, once you are working in the church and you are doing something and people are looking up unto you, oh, look at the way that brother is leading prayer. Oh, look at the way that sister is singing. And the same sister, they are finding you in certain places and they are seeing you doing certain things. It's too dangerous because if such people eventually uh, begin to follow your footsteps and they end up in hell, God definitely is going to ask you for their blood. Praise the Lord. Do we have someone else who would like to um, tell us what you learned last Sunday, Sunday at the last lesson? <coughs> Hallelujah. To repent, the yeah. person will not repent. That so you know. Instead of instead of giving the flesh, we should learn how to suffer the flesh to gain to gain Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We say our flesh is actually uh, what puts us in trouble. So um, we agree now that there should be discipline in the church. Should there be discipline in the church? Should there be discipline in the church? But you know that a lot of people don't believe there should be discipline in the church again these days. And I think um, um, a, a sister asked that question that she had never even seen where the discipline of body in the church. You know that I was the first person saying it right now. And I say because people always believe, oh, if I scold somebody, if I correct somebody, they will come back to the church. And they do not know that actually some people need to be corrected. And they are actually waiting for you to correct them. And you don't correct them, they just continue to go in the wrong direction, believing that they are right. 
So let's not be afraid to correct people in the church. Let's not be afraid to, you know, to, to, to put order. Because even our God is a God of order. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, is it proper for a Christian to get angry? Is it proper for a Christian to get angry? Which means it's proper to get angry. Somebody can be angry, but, but don't be, let, let the anger not, not drift to sin. Let the anger not lead to sin. So there should be a, I mean, once you get angry, you can always also call people back. Okay? Just like a, a, a parent, when you flog your children or you scold them, you have a way of bringing them closer again. But that does not mean that you cannot get angry with people. Praise the Lord. Because if you no, do not get angry with people, there's no way they are going to know that what they are doing is wrong. Do you understand? Even Jesus got angry with people, did he not? No, can, can we say the truth? Yes. Did Jesus get angry with people? So why did he get angry with people? Because he wanted to see them changing. Did the apostles get angry with people? Yes. So if you say, oh, I don't want people to see me getting angry, I don't want to get angry with people, you're not doing the right thing. Because some people actually look up onto you. So when you when you get angry with them, they they change. They don't even want you to be angry with them. They know that they have done something wrong. So when a Christian is angry, it does not mean that that Christian is wicked. But the person now is wicked when you now allow your anger, you use your anger to begin to do bad things. Praise the Lord. Do you understand now? So anger, you can get angry to correct people, to change. And at the same time, don't allow your anger, you know, to get to, to the extreme, to get to sin, to get to bitterness, to get to the, the point where you now start thinking of, of, of destroying the person. And it leads to bitterness. No, do not allow your anger to get to bitterness. But you can get angry with people, praise the Lord, in order for them to change. So getting angry with people is not a sin. Because I see that a lot of Christians are getting it wrong these days. Someone offends you, you are angry, and it's like, I, and she calls herself a Christian, and he calls himself a Christian. For goodness sake, how do I let you know that what you have done is wrong? Do I start clapping for you? I, or I throw my face away and say, okay, let me not talk so that the person will not feel bad. I want you to feel bad. Because I want you to change. I want you to repent. God gets angry with us. Praise the Lord. The same way you will raise your children. And, oh, I don't want daddy to get angry with me. Oh, my parents will be angry with me. And so you will not do that thing because you don't want them to be angry with you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So uh, thank you for all, everyone that contributed this morning. So we move on to chapter 6 now. Praise the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 6, I hope we all have our Bibles. Please open your Bible. Your Bibles, um, it is always good to read from your own Bible. Does any of you who has a complaint against someone dare go to law before the unrighteous and not before the saints? Or do you not know that the saints will judge the world? I hope we are following that now because we get this wrong these days. And this is that we are doing contrary to the word of God. Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world is judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest cases? Do you not know that we will judge angels not to speak of things pertaining to this life? So if you have cases pertaining to this life, do you select those who have no standing in the church to judge? I say this to your shame. Can it be that there is not one wise person amongst you who will be able to arbitrate between his brothers? Instead, Brother goes to law against brother, and that before unbelievers. Therefore, it is already a total defeat for you that you have lawsuits against one another. Why not rather put up with injustice? Why not rather be cheated? Instead, you act unjustly and cheat, and this to brothers. Do you not know that the unjust will not inherit God's kingdom? Do not be deceived. No sexually immoral people idolaters, adulterers, 
male prostitutes, homosexuals, thieves, greedy people, drunkards, revilers, or swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you were like this, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. I believe that that, you know, that particular passage is very, very clear. Started from, it is not proper for Christians to take Christians to court. Do we get it now? Whatever will make a Christian to take another Christian to court shows that there is hatred now. Because you don't come back from court and become friends again. Yes or no? So what should we do? What did the Bible, uh, the scripture now suggest? We call people in our midst. Let leaders, people between husband and wife, instead of just saying, I'm not getting married again, I'm filing divorce suits and all that. Have you reported to your pastor first? The leaders in church should come together and find solution to that problem. And when, when we take ourselves to the, to the law court, what happens? The Bible says we, we, we are not ashamed. You know, at times, even in the court, they say, but both of you, especially about both of you are Christians, you are even members of the same church, what happened? It is better for you to be cheated than to do that. Let it go. I've been cheated several times by, you know, by church members. People coming here, you know, take me for granted, see things and everything. Even the ones that are very close. That I could call police for. I just let it go. Why should I call police to come and arrest the judgment? I won't do that. And that's what I've just resolved. That even if you come to borrow money, I say, hey, Pastor, with whatever I know I can leave for you that I will give you. That in case this person does not pay back, this money will not kill me. Are we getting it as Christians? I want us to answer, are we getting it? Is this happening in the church? It's happening. Should it happen? No, that's the scripture. Have you seen the reason why we need to be studying the Bible in order for us to be matured, in order for us to grow, and in order for us to know the mind of Christ concerning things? A woman swing her husband in court, Thank you for adding money. I want to get this. I want to get that. Let it go. Let it go. Oh, the man has cheated you. Let it go. You have put everything. Maybe both of you built a house together. I've seen such cases a lot. Maybe you were even the one that bought the land. Most women will buy the land and they will, you know, build with their husbands at the end of the day because when you divorce, the, the property, because it's in the man's name, except both of you put your names. Your name is written, not Mr. and Mrs. If it is Mr. and Mrs., it goes to the man, because he can actually marry somebody else that is also bearing Mrs. Your name is not there. So you feel cheated, and you want to go to court to fight it and all that. There's no need. Who says you won't build a better house? If the man he has thrown you out of the house, God will take care of you. Leave that to God. That's what the Bible is saying. That is not what me I am saying. So if truly we are Christians, it's easy. 
But you can ask yourself, how easy is that? Is that? If you are trusting God and you believe in Him, and you know that He can always give you back what you have lost, you will let it go. And this is the easiest way to forgive. Because if you don't know how to let go, then you can never forgive. So even if you are preaching forgiveness, preaching forgiveness, you need to start practicing it by letting go. And that's why you can't hold on to anything. As a Christian, you don't claim right. Let Jesus be your right. And he's the one that fights for your right. Praise the Lord. You can go to the lawsuit with a non-believer. But not with a fellow believer. So that we do not rob the name of the Lord in the mud. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, say, are we not the one that we judge the world? We now take our cases to unbelievers to come and judge for us. When we are the ones that we judge them, at the end, they are now the ones judging us. Some of them will even ask you, don't, read, don't you read your Bible because they also know the Bible. So you people should go and say to now, is your Bible not even telling you, preaching peace to you? That is someone that does not follow Christ. We don't use your own Bible to cancel you. Praise the Lord. And that's why it looks as if Christians are, when you're a believer, that you are, you are a fool. And that you don't know what you are doing. And a lot of people do not know that it's because you are... You want to please God. And you have left that matter to God. And let God fight it for you. And I always tell people, when you leave your matter, your case for God to fight, it's too dangerous. Because God will fight the way you wouldn't even know that you can fight. That you wouldn't have been able to fight. So there's no need. We are not only going to judge the world, we are also Christians. Do you know that you are saying we are going to judge angels? That's how powerful you are because of the authority that Christ has given to us. Because we operate in his power. That's how powerful we are. So brothers and sisters, when, once, I mean, once we are Christians, we are the same, you know, in the same church, you know this person as a Christian, you know, you should always let go. She's your brother, and uh, is your brother, she's your sister. Once you become a believer, it's not only your biological siblings that are your siblings. As we are here right now, we are brothers and sisters. I can't be driving and I see any of you on, uh, uh, in trouble on the road or you are going my way, I will just pass. Or I see something happening to you, I will just pass. I behave as if I don't know you. No, I will stop. Ah, this is my son. This is my brother. This is my sister. What <coughs> happened? That's the way it should be. But it's no longer like that in most cases, right? And that's why the... the, the that's why I keep saying that the problem of the world is the problem of the church. We are the problem of the world. It's the church. So are you seeing it now? That most of the things that happen in the world, if Christians are actually behaving like Christians, they will not be happy. We are the light. So the world should see the difference. And they should take from us. But we are now taking from the world. What example do we want the, the world, the unbelievers, to take from the church? You want to ask a question? All right. You say about forgiveness. Yes. Like, uh, in the example, like you are working with your friends, you are with your friends, and 
come to like a certain issue come between two of you. And you say, ah, let me just forget because the way she behaves, I don't want anything to join us together. But someone says, ah, doing that, it won't help you. Then that person come and settle everything. You people are together playing, playing, but that friend she did not understand. At the end of the day, she will keep talking, say, ah, you people are discussing about how doing all that, doing all that. So, so even with that, you don't have business with that. So they said to us like two times. So I tried to avoid myself. So is that one they see no? I don't understand. Okay. Yes. All right. When you say you try to avoid her, yes. what do you mean? You don't talk to her? Yes. Because if you see her, you won't talk to her. They say to us, mm -hmm. we are talking, we see ourselves, we do it. But she still continues so, to make trouble. Sometimes if I'm fasting, she will not greet me, I will greet her. Okay. Okay. She will say, eh, me, I will not greet her because of what? So I, I don't even mind because I'm fixing my own. I have a lot of things in my head. So when she's fasting, she will say, you did not greet her. Say that one, that one, she will keep using me, talking, saying, uh -huh, say, but me, I will not even answer. But even with that, she will still follow me to my house, come and be embarrassing me, talk, I don't even have business. So what can I do with that kind of person? I, I'm not talking to her to avoid problems. Even when I'm talking to you, you keep on both spiritual and physical, you, you are disturbing me. So what can I do in this case? Okay. She's a friend, and... Uh Apart from that, even if she's not your friend, you're a Christian. If she's a Christian or not, that has got nothing to do with you. Okay, the only way to heal your own mind and to make sure that you're not keeping minds and you're not going to, you're not offending God. When you see her, greet her and go. Do you understand? Not greeting her will build up minds and hatred in you. That is if you see her regularly. You cannot see her and pass. Oh, uh, how are you? Good morning, and you go. That's all. Not, not a changing. Mm -hmm. that, this one, that, that exactly what I'm doing before. Okay. But even with that, she will keep on. So she's keep praying, drinking, keep praying. smoking. So I say, let me keep just praying. No, no, I just keep praying. It. Just keep praying. <laughs> but let it not be obvious that you are. Let it not look as if you are keeping my with her. You understand? You mean, you know, let it not be like you are keeping malice with that. Let your mind be free. Because I'm talking about your mind now. Your mind must not harbor hatred. Your mind must not harbor bitterness. You must guard your heart against that. So if greeting her will free your mind, greet her. If it will not bring malice to your mind, you understand? Yes. And if not, if not greeting her also frees your mind, you know that oh, if I free this one and she will start again, you can go on your own. But make sure that you do not have all malice. Praise the Lord. I have given an example of a neighbor that we were the same church. We were, we were going to the same church. We were church members together. The same church. And we were also neighbors living in the same compound. And for three years, I was greeting her, and she never answered. She was the one that offended me. I didn't want to greet her. God said, start greeting her. So I kept greeting her for three good years, not three weeks, <laughs> not three months, three good years. God <coughs> told me, keep greeting her. And I would greet her, she would not even answer me. You know, that one was there. If we were enough to say, what the hell? Why should I be greeting her? And she's not answering to the extent that even that my husband noticed that I was greeting her, she was not answering her. And that one said, is there anything wrong with you? She feeding you. Must still greet her. But I wasn't released in my spirit to stop greeting her. And that's why I am saying, God is using that to teach you something. Do you know every problem that you go through as a Christian is a training for you? Everything that happens to you is a training and there must be something that you will learn from there. And to make matters worse, she had a shop in, the, in front of the compound. A company, she has a shop. So I must see her every day. I was living upstairs. So coming downstairs, I must see her every day. 
So there was no way I could avoid that, and I must greet because the Holy Spirit said, Keep greeting. And she will not answer. And most times she might be with our customers, I will greet. She might be at the gate when I want to drive out, I will greet, and she will not answer me. You know, very, very um, annoying, and that can, like, you know, ridicule you. But I was taking it because the Holy Spirit said, Keep greeting her. And after three years, you know, greeting somebody three years and does not answer you, already got used to it. There was no bitterness, there was no malice, so it became even fun to me. Because I already knew she would not answer. I would just greet and smile and pass. Oh, eh, I won't call her name now. Oh, eh, like when you good morning, how are you are the children? She will not answer and go. Oh, as I'm coming, oh, good evening, how are you? I would, you know, it became like something fun to me. I would smile and go. So that way you knew that I never had anything against her any longer. Do you understand? After three years, and God said, stop one day. As I was climbing downstairs, I saw her at the gate. And the Holy Spirit said, don't greet her, pass. And do you know when I passed, I did not greet her. She was shocked. Mm -hmm. Because she was already enjoying it. Enjoying that she was humiliating me. I didn't greet her, she was shocked. The following day, for one month, after a month, as I was coming, she was the first person to greet me. Do you understand? So it has to do with your mind. Because you know you are going through training. We keep learning from this scripture from the Lord until we die. There are things that God is dealing with us every day. If we use your husband, if we use your children, if we use everybody, if we use your friends. To train you on certain things. And if you have not learned, you keep experiencing it. Until you pass that exam. So my journey is an exam you are writing right now. And you must not fail. You need to ask God, what do I do? Every time I greet this lady, she looks for my trouble again. So it has to do with your mind. God needs your mind to be free from all malice and bitterness and all that. So as you are praying, the Lord will be helping you. As you are studying the scriptures, he will be speaking to you. Do you get it now? Praise the Lord. I saw that you wanted to say something. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What I see in our issue and what you generated is I just want to add more to the two essential We are in the class right now. And I thank God for this teaching because God has Not a fool. Check out what she says now. Thank God, God just brought her to the church again. Mm. You never knew the gate is open. So it is the Holy Spirit. Mm. There are many ways the Holy Spirit teaches us. As long as the moment you say you are a Christian, mm. you are born again, He started teaching you things. If Jesus can endure, the apostle can endure. In our last uh, uh, meeting, like on Sunday Bible study. We are the, I always pick that, uh, 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 that statement. statement that we are the Bible that people are reading, we are the Christ that people are looking for. It is not all about holding your Bible, preaching all over again in our life. So thank God you are a Christian, you are the Bible now. All those things that she is trying to do, it's a trial. Yes. God is trying to. The devil is even frustrating. And God now is in your mind. And uh, the, there is a saying in the Bible, they say the, 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 the devil is an accuser of the brethren. Anything you do now, the devil will say, ah, He's the God, first person to go and report you to God. Look at what that's your daughter that is always and carrying so Bible. That is what I normally do. Do you understand? Mind. Even in our daily home, even with our wife, with our children. children. Colleagues, there, there are things that will come. There are colleagues in the office, office that will hate you, want to do everything to get you out of that yes. job. We just so have to learn how to live with them. To us, it's true. You are facing, but by the help of the Holy Spirit, you will overcome. And like my own house, at times, you know, my wife like that spirit of I'm not free. <laughs> so, <laughs> due to the Bible study I mm -hmm. normally go to now, it has it helps me a lot. At times in my life, I don't want anybody. I 
can only know my head, know mm. what is wrong with me. But due to the, the way I committed myself with the Bible study now, I can deal with something. There are times you say anything of your, 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 your head. This one is not like this. You will see hammer at it. That, that the old spirit just got like move out. And I move. So I thank God for the teaching of Bible study is very important. Honestly speaking, anytime I miss Bible study, it's as if I'm missing something. The Sunday, Sunday activities, I don't, but the moment I get hold of that Bible stuff, that Bible study, honestly, it's just what we that's what, that's what changes us. Honestly. Is it's that what, so, when you study it, when you understand it, a lot of people do not understand yes. it. Even some are reading it on their own, their eyes are closed, they can't get understanding. Yes, so. Do I you don't understand? To talk to my wife. Coming to church earlier to visit this Bible study, then you will know. You say, No, yeah, this is a story. Most women in marriage is now, what they need is vision. That is what is killing us. <laughs> yes, I'm, 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 yes. I'm telling you, that is what is killing us. they are looking like for. my wife now. Vision, 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 vision. That is the problem I'm having. I will not, I will not, I will not hide it. Vision, vision, go to church. Yes. No, <laughs> so thank God for your case. I'm sure God has spoken to you this morning. You, just, you mentioned something. I just picked it now that she, 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 she isn't a Christian. She's not because you said she she she, she, she yes, smokes, she drinks, she, and all yes. that. So she's your convert. Do you she know? won't tell me that she's going to sell it. Tell me I don't know that she's, she's your convert. She's in your convert. God, God is doing it. It's not God. <laughs> you are a Christian, aren't you? Yes. You love Christ. Okay? But you will not want to see her go to hell. And that's why you will do everything. Okay? Take the insult for Christ. Keep on praying for her. No matter what okay? Show her more love. Show her more love. If she comes to shout on you, you just be smiling. Don't fight with her. Okay? You just be smiling. And you tell her, oh, do you want to drink water? Because we have seen you now, you know, you need water. You know? Ask God to teach you how to how to laugh over things. Even in marriage, that's what, what a lot of people need. Laugh over issues. Then you discover that most issues that you think, oh, it's, it will just decide that somebody is trying to fight you and you are laughing. And you're asking the person, I've just finished cooking, or will you eat? The person will be thinking, are you crazy? Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay? God bless you. Let's continue. All right. So he said, we have already been defeated if we begin to carry our cases to, the, to, 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 uh, to, to have lawsuits against one another. The devil has already defeated us. You will not be defeated in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Uh, all right. Okay. So, so you, it is better for you to Go through the injustice. Let the person cheat you. But God himself will fight you. Let the person cheat you. That person that is cheating you, thinks he's cheating you, is God that is fighting. Let the person cheat you. Let the person cheat you. And it also they hear that we also say do not be deceived. Remember, we talked about um, uh, people doing wrong things in the church, and we know, as we still see them as Christians. Do not be deceived. They are not Christians. That's what you just read there. They are not Christians. Do not be deceived. Say anyone that is working in sexual immorality. Idolaters, that is all the person is thinking of and worshipping is either money or whatever, I must do this, I must do that. And you can't see the spirit of God in them. You can't see them being able to, to, to live certain things. That's idolatry. Sexual immorality. We have sexual immorality people in the church. 
We have them on the altar. As preachers, as 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 prayer warriors, as uh, uh, singers, as you know, as instrumentalists, we have sexual immorality in the church. That does not mean that they are Christians. Greedy people, they are greedy for gain. They can fight you for money. Drunkards, swindlers, revilers, thieves, taking things that are not your own. We have homosexuals in the church now. Homosexuals, male prostitutes. The same way we have female prostitutes, we have male prostitutes, we have men who are following people for money. Following, anytime you are following any woman for money, you are a prostitute. And a, as a woman, you are following a man for money, you are a prostitute. You don't need to be in that detail. You are going out with somebody because of money, you are already a prostitute because you are selling yourself for money. So all these people will not inherit the kingdom of God. Adulterers. You are married and you have a boyfriend. It's common, even in the church. You are married and you have a girlfriend. It's common, even in the church. Some are even sleeping with other people's wives, other people's husbands. And you come to the altar to lead praise and worship. <laughs> to come and lead prayer. You are the head of Usher. You are a prayer warrior. They are there. Every time you see them, they are the ones doing everything. Yet, they are going nowhere. Yet, they won't inherit the kingdom of God. It does not matter how much you know how to pray. It does not matter how much you know how to preach. Speak in tongues like an angel. You say you won't inherit the kingdom of God because God is not seeing you as his son or his daughter. You are a sinner. You need to repent. You need to change. You don't become a born again Christian and still continue in sin. God says it's not allowing that. He says it shows that you are not a Christian yet. God, Christ will never do that. What Jesus will not do, you shouldn't do it. That's what makes you a Christian. Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him that same day. He still ate with him. Let him carry his guilt on his head. And he actually carried his guilt on his head. Leave the person. And that's why it says, well, if your enemy is hungry, give him food. If he's thirsty, give him water. If he does not have clothes, you have clothes. Tell him, I brought this for you. So you are heaping coals of fire on his head. Because that alone is enough for him to change. And if he's not changing, it of course. It will end up in destruction. And that's what I always say. I said, Christians don't fight. I always say, I don't fight for myself. I tell you the truth. But when God fights, I'm always afraid. When God fights, and I see the people that have offended me, and I see what God is doing, I, I begin to say, Father, is there not? I'm forgiving them. Please, this is too much. You don't know how dangerous it is to hand over your case to God. Hey. Hey. Praise the Lord. Amen. He said, so, so, he said, all these things, we were like this before. Why are we still doing it? So some of you were like this before. You were idolaters. You were, you were revilers. You were swindlers. You were um, prostitutes. You were doing these kind of things before. Now you say you have come to Christ and you are still doing it. Then you have not come to Christ. 
When you came to Christ, then you are washed, sanctified. You are not meant to live that life again because it's no longer the life that you should live. Now you have the life of Christ. So if we say we have the life of Christ, uh, we cannot live that life again because you can't live the two together. It's not possible. Because darkness and light can never work together. They can't even cohabit. Praise the Lord. Verse 12. Everything is permissible for me. But not everything is necessary for me. Not everything is helpful to me. Everything is permissible for me. But I will not be brought under the control of anything. Let's discuss that. Can you see that? There are certain things that, oh, they are not saying they are permissible. But they must not also not control us. Praise the Lord. <coughs> and they are not every, it is not every time that they are necessary. I don't know whether you are getting it. It's not every time. So instead of you dying, I must have this, I must have this, those are the things leading us to sin. There are times that we don't need the things that we are running after, that will eventually take us to, to sin. That they are not necessary, so we let go. I don't know where someone is getting what I'm saying. In your mind, you know certain things that maybe I want this, I want that, and you can do anything to get those things. You ask yourself, is it really necessary? Do I really need this now? So why should I die for it? Or why should I uh, commit a sin to get it? But that's what we just we have freedom, but that, that same freedom must not be abused. That same freedom must not take us to sin. Everything is permissible, but not everything is necessary. Not everything is helpful to you at a particular time. Because I hear some Christians, uh, wine is not bad, uh, Jesus drank wine and all that. Then you ask yourself, we also know, okay, if wine is not bad, wine also can intoxicate and lead you to sin, right? When you look at the use of it and you look at, oh, the side effect, then you think, do I really need, need it? Do you really need it? Is it really necessary? Some people are sick because of the kind of things that they eat. Of course, you are not committing a sin by eating them, but are they really useful to your system? Are they helpful to you? you know how I can control myself and all that. But you need to ask yourself, do I really need it? What if suddenly I become tipsy? And when I'm tipsy, I don't know what I am doing. I say things that I'm not supposed to say. Is it helpful to me? Do I need it? Or because I just want to feel good. I want to have pleasure. So it is not everything. There are so many ways like that, so many things that we do. Oh, you have money and you want to buy this, you want to buy that. Meanwhile, you have some. Maybe you have some cars. Oh, this car just came, I must buy it and all that. You have to say, do I really need it? I have some. That's, I have one that I'm still using. I have to have, you know, why do I have to buy another one? I can use that money either to help somebody or to do something else. That's what we are saying. It is your money. Yes, it's permissible. You can spend it. But you can spend it on anything. But is that thing that you want to spend it on necessary? This 
these are ways of having self-control, ways of controlling ourselves, including having sex. That's where you can control yourself. That even when your wife is not around or your husband is not around, you can remove your, you can control yourself. But when you cannot do without it, when your husband is not around, your wife is not around, you find it difficult. There should be self-control in every area of our lives. The things we eat, even the way we dress, everything. Self-control. Because you ask yourself questions. Someone insults you, you want to respond. You ask yourself, is it really necessary? I tell people, somebody calls you a thief and you're not a thief. Move on. That's not my name. But you want to fight. Is it necessary? It's not necessary. For what? You call me a prostitute and I'm not a prostitute. That's your. It's you talking. That's your hand. That's not my name. And that, that's not who I am. Praise the Lord. So I don't need to start fighting <coughs> like that. That's your own opinion. You have the right to your opinion. Praise the Lord. And calling me a prostitute does not make me a prostitute. Calling me a thief does not mean that I have become a thief because you have called me a thief. Praise the Lord. Amen. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be brought under the control of anything. I've just explained it. So don't allow anything to control you. Nothing should control you. You should be in charge. You should control situation. You should control everything in your life. Asking yourself, is it necessary? Do I need it? Is it helpful? That's how you control. Food for the stomach and the stomach for food. But God will do away with both of them at the end of the day. Why? <laughs> so you hear people, I, I can't fast and all that. You can't control yourself if you don't know how to fast. You'll be living a life that you cannot control certain things. And that's why so many people think that they are suffering when they lack certain things because they have not learned to be you know, to be self-controlled. The body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. Are you getting me? So what are the things that you put in your body? As I said, is it necessary? Because you, you want to look good and all that, you know, you do what everybody is saying, you put a tool, you put everything, you ask yourself, is it? Yes, it may not be a sin. But I've seen Christ, like Christians, so many Christians use that tool these days. Yes, it is not a sin. But do you need it? Is it necessary? Is it necessary? Because some even put the mark. They uh, put a cross, they do their tattoo, you know, they cross, they are putting on their body or whatever. Just because everybody is doing it, does not mean that you should do it. If you know that, it's not necessary. Because ask yourself, in the next five, ten years, will you still like that thing on your body? Will you still like that thing on your body? So by the time you want to remove it, I don't know how they, how they remove it. Start feeling your body. There are certain things you should be careful doing. God raised up the Lord, and we also raise us up by His power. Do you not know that your bodies are the, are the members of Christ? So should I take the members of Christ and make them members of prostitutes? So where do you find yourselves? Or where do you find yourself? 
<coughs> Who do you join your body with? You go to a hotel to go and do quick, nobody knows you yet. But you have joined your body to a prostitute. So many of us, we have so many of our Christians, tongue speaking ones who are in corners looking for prostitutes. When you join your body with a prostitute, of course, you have allowed certain things into your body. You have allowed certain things into your body. And I tell men, most of the girls that you are thinking, you are sleeping with that are not your wife, you know where they are from. Because the devil knows you, so he will send all kinds to you to get you. I say, should I take the, 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 the members of Christ uh, and make them members of a prostitute? Absolutely not. Do you not know that anyone joined to a prostitute is one body with her? Whoever you join your body with, you have become one with that person. For it says, the two will become flesh. For anyone joined with the Lord, joined to the Lord, is one, is one spirit with the Lord. So a lot of men have this kind of problem, even women. How many people have you slept with in your life? You have joined with those people. So when you begin to have problems later, don't say it is one, one witch that is after your life. It is you that went to join your body with them. And when you hear some of them, when they are confessing, they say these things. They've taken your glory, taking your destiny, taking honestly. Because the devil sent them out. So get to you that you say you are a Christian. You have slept with 500 girls in your life. You have joined with 500 spirits. 500 of them. Only God will help you. When you wake up from your slumber. Some have, they have slept with all kinds that they cannot even remember. So when their problems start, they don't know where it's coming from. Some cannot have children today because of that kind of thing. Because of the kind of people that they have joined their body with and have entered into their system and they, they have made a covenant unknowingly with such people. Because every sexual relationship is a covenant. Anyone that you sleep with, you have entered into a covenant with that person because it's a covenant of blood. So let our young girls, young men, hear and listen. And let the ones who are married and have joined with some people before and you have not realized it, that run to the Lord and begin to cry. And break every covenant that you have had with everyone that you have slept with that is not your husband or your wife. Free from sexual immorality. Every sin a person can commit is outside the body. But the person who is sexually immoral sins against his own body. And that body is meant to be joined with the Lord. Have you seen it now? Everyone that is sexually immoral has sinned against his own body. Every other sin is outside your body. But the sin of sexual immorality is great. It will destroy you. You have sinned against your own body. Who will help you? Do you not know that your body is a sanctuary of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? You know, this is addressing Christians now. You say you have the Holy Spirit in you and you are joining your body again in sexual immorality. To another person. You have sinned against your body and you have changed the Holy Spirit away from your life. Your body that has been sanctified that the Holy Spirit now lives in you? Or do we not believe that the Holy Spirit lives in us? Maybe you don't know. Maybe you think they are just saying it. The moment you give your life to Christ, you have the Holy Spirit you know, in you. 
living in you because it's the one that now guides your steps. So how did you find yourself in sexual immorality? Before you enter into that sexual immorality, where the Holy Spirit is, you know, is trying to cancer, you are not hearing and you are going ahead, he has left you. Because he will not be here in that your body when you are joining it with a prostitute or with another, another sinner. Do you not know that your body is a sanctuary of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? Whom you have from God? Because he has given you his spirit. You are no longer your own. For you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So when you want to wear even certain things that will expose your body, you should know that it is not right. Because this body now belongs to the Holy Spirit. Because I've been bought with a price. I no longer own my body. It belongs to the Lord. I'm joined with him now. The only person that has the right to touch your body if you are married is your wife or your husband. Your wife or your husband. If you give your body to someone else, you have chased away the Holy Spirit from your life. And that, that body has been polluted. You need to start all over again. Praise the Lord. Amen. Flee from sexual immorality. Run away from it. That's what it means. No matter what anyone will promise you, run. Run. Run for your sake. Run for the sake of the Lord. Run because you have the Holy Spirit in you. Run because you are you don't belong, your body does not belong to you. Run because the devil is looking for how to pollute that body. And you are the only one who can release the body. So run. If someone wrecks you, it will incur the wrath of the Lord. If you did not give your body willingly to anybody, God will fight for you. That person is in trouble. Praise the Lord. Do we get it now? Do we have questions? Any questions? So if someone tells you it doesn't matter, you can see. God hates sexual immorality. <coughs> it's not something that you do because everybody is doing it. So even my pastor said, but I have girlfriend. So I see my pastor will be you know, dead because so because of that you are not doing it. Who told you your pastor is heaven bound? Because he's preaching the Bible. Everybody that is preaching the Bible that is heaven bound. Praise the Lord. Do we have any questions? Let's stop copying what is not right from people. Let's copy what is right. Copy what is right. Don't be afraid that people will call you a, 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 a Mr. Righteous. Let them call you Mr. Righteous. This is righteous. Jesus mother. Yes. They will abuse you, they will make jest of you. It's not it's not them, it's the devil pushing them to push you. Now all of us are Christians now. What the only is doing themselves, waiting. Even people that are better than you said, they are doing certain things. How, who, who, what makes them better than you? They are insane, they are better than you. They are not better than you, they are insane. Nobody is better than you. Nobody is better than you if he's living in sin. Don't get humiliated by anybody's um, um, appearance or show of, of spirituality. Don't get jittery. Don't get humiliated. 
Don't, don't look at yourself and say, ah, see these people. Blah, blah, blah. Don't. Any question? Yes. <laughs>